Here is our soldier cutout which we are going to deploy onto a different background. We're going to take a look at how to blend an image with the background. As you can see from our person, the colors does not match with the background. So what we want to do is we want to hold control, left click on here to get ourselves the selection. You want to go over to the adjustments and get yourself the curves. If you've never used the curves before, this basically allows you to have the red, green and blue channel. So this is the master channel, but you can also click on here and then break it down to each and individual channel itself. So you have the red channel, the green channel, and of course the blue channel. Now a cool little trick for this is if you minimize this and you go over to the channels, you can hide all of them. You can hide the green channel and hide the blue channel. So this will only display the red colors. And what you want to do is you want to go back onto layers, double left click on here, go onto here and then set it to a red channel. You basically want to match the person with the background. So if you left click on here, you can either increase the reds or you can decrease the reds. And as you can see, if we decrease it too much, then he doesn't really blend very well. So what we need to do is we actually need to increase the red colors to something like this. That is looking more blended together. We can then go back onto the channels. You can hide the red one and then get yourself the green. Go back onto here and switch over to the green. Increase the green a little bit more. And the very last one is going to be the blues. And you want to get yourself the blue channel, hide the green, go onto here and select the blue channel. Now with the blue channel, if we increase this, you can see it's becoming more brighter. So we need to go in the opposite direction and we need to turn the blues down to something like this. We can then minimize this and you can re-add all the channels. And now he looks much more blended and matching to the background. Next up, you want to go ahead and press Ctrl and J on your curves layer. And on that curves layer, you want to hold Alt or Option key. Left click on here, and this will only show you the mask layer itself. And the reason why we've done this is because we want to get ourselves the brush tool. Make sure you select in a black color. Decrease the size a little bit more. And then you only want the edges to be visible. Right, and there we go. So once you've gone all the way around and you've only got yourself the edges, we can then go ahead and hold Alt, left click on here, and you will see that this has only applied it to the edges. But the next thing to do is for this image, for this specific image, as you can see, since the sun is behind him, it's going to act differently because the back of him will be more lit up compared to the front. So what we need to do is we need to darken the front of him Select the main layer once again and go over to the adjustments. You want to get yourself the levels. And with the levels, to make this more darker, all we have to do is turn down the light colors. Set this one to 64. And then you can minimize this. But once you've made this layer and you've made it more darker, we need to go over to the brush tool. We want to make sure we're selecting a black color. And we want to make it so onto his face right here, the sun is reflecting. So you just want to focus on the areas which will be lit up. And on the first curves that we created, we need to turn this one down to about 50%. Next up, we want to go onto the soldier layer right here, get ourselves a new layer above this one, go over to the brush tool, in the brush color, Get yourself a color of 322E2F and then press OK. You want to hold Control, get yourself the selection again. And of course, on the new layer, you want to paint it onto here. You want to go ahead and press Control and D. And then on this layer, set this one to a soft light. Go onto the soldier layer, go ahead and press Control and J. 
And on that new layer, right click on here, go to blending options. And in here, you wanna get yourself a inner glow. And the reason why we're doing this is because where the sun is shining is we're going to enhance the rim light. And to do this, we're going to turn up the opacity to 70%, set the size to 24, and then go ahead and press OK. You want to right click on here and convert this into a small object. This will allow us to use the brush tool, create ourselves a mask layer on this one, and we just want to remove it from at the bottom right here, since we don't need it right here. And for this one, you want to set this one to 30% for the opacity. And with the shadows, what we want to do is, first of all, make him look like he's actually touching the floor and not floating. So to do this, we're going to get ourselves the brush tool. Now, you want to go onto the color and then just set this one to a pure black color and go ahead and press OK. Now that you've done that, get yourself a new layer and with this new layer, you want to make sure you select in the brush tool, set it to about 60 or 50%, and of course, 0% hardness. And you just want to paint this on to here like so. Now you want to make sure this one is underneath your soldier layer, and then just paint it on underneath the foot. So something like this. But with this one, we want to simply turn down the opacity to, let's say, about 80%. You want to hold Control or Command. Once again, get ourselves the selection, get ourselves a new layer, go over to the Colors or the Bucket Tool, go into the Color, and we want to sample a nice dark color from this image. So let's make it a little bit more darker, like so. You can then left click on this new layer, making sure you're selecting that one. Press Ctrl and D. You then want to press Ctrl and T to resize this. Right click on here and then flip vertically. And with this is going to be the shadow. And you want to move it right underneath his foot. Now at the moment it's not touching, so what we can do is a cool little trick for this is you can go to edit, go down to puppet warp, and this will allow you to pinpoint the main part of the body. This will now sit still. You want to do it to the right foot as well. And you want to get yourself one on the knee area and then one right at the bottom. You want to move this one up so it's actually touching the foot. And if you wanted to, you can also get yourself one right here and move this one up to here. You can then go ahead and apply the changes once you're happy with it. And to fix this, you press Ctrl and T, get yourself the transformation controls and you can hold Ctrl or Command and then drag the corner of this and this will let you to edit the perspective of it. And that is looking good. So once you're happy with it, Double left click to apply it. Now doing this technique is not going to be perfect. So as you can see near the foot area, even though we did move this one, it is still not touching, but that's fine because we can go over to the brush tool and we can fix this up ourselves. Going to the brush tool, setting this to 100% hardness. And once you've done that, we're just going to paint it onto here Now, at the moment, the shadow is going to be very visible and very solid. So what we need to do is we need to edit the opacity and set it to 80%. Now, another thing about the shadow is we need to make it a little bit more blurry the further it goes out. So to do this, we can go to filter at the top here, go down to blur gallery and get yourself a field blur. With the field blur, this will allow us to control which areas we want it to stay sharp. So if you left click on here and get yourself two points, you want to click on here and edit the blur to zero. Same goes for the other one, so this one to zero. If you get yourself two more over here, and let's say you wanted it to start right up to here, you could put it up to there. 
and let's put it a little bit further up. So let's say about there. And once you're happy with your results, go ahead and press OK. And there we go. So now we've got it a bit more blurry. And then finally, the last thing that we can do is we can go over to the bucket tool, right click on here and get yourself the gradient tool. With the gradient right at the top, you want to get yourself a gradient, which is a black and 100% opacity and one that will fade out into nothing. So if you want to know how to do that, you just simply edit the opacity right here and set it to zero. And then this one to 100. You can get yourself a mask layer on the shadow and then just simply left click and then drag this out. So let's say right about here, something like this is looking really good. If you wanted to, you can press Ctrl and J on the shadow layer and this will make it more visible. And the reason why you'd want to do this is because if you select yourself the mask itself, get yourself the brush tool on 0% hardness and only get yourself the beginning or the front of it. This will make it so the shadow is much more harsher as it is closer to the foot. And then the very last thing that we can do is we can fix up this foot right here or both of the feet. So you want to get yourself the brush tool, get yourself a new layer. And with that layer, we're going to go ahead and select ourselves one of these colors from the background. Make sure you get yourself the selection of the soldier and put this one above your soldier layer. And you just want to paint it onto here like so. And there we go. With this one, we want to set it to overlay for the effect and then set it to about 50% and press Ctrl and D and there we go. We're just going to move the shadows underneath this one as well. So this is going to make it so it's visible underneath the foot. And there we go. So you're pretty much done with your image.